Coming up on MHK All Day, find out what caused the Student Governing Association to push back presidential elections. And see what new addition the city of Manhattan just approved. Plus, we have some helpful tips to make sure you have a fun but safe fake Patty's Day. Welcome to MHK All Day. I'm Callie Ogborn. And I'm Evan Penner. Coming up, we'll tell you about how some people plan to celebrate one of Manhattan's biggest parties. And we take a look at how virtual reality is helping aid personal navigation. Nobody likes construction, but near the corner of 8th and Morrow, the results of the work being done will be worth the wait. Residents and students near this area have had to find detours which slow down their commutes. The residents won't be able to see the results until next fall because construction isn't expected to be done until May of 2018, according to the City of Manhattan website. On Saturday, a kayaker, per on Saturday, a kayaker perished at Tuttle Creek Lake. According to Kansas, the Kansas State Collegian KSU student Ber Anthony Berg was kayaking in the afternoon when the water became too rough due to high winds. Rescue crews responded to a report of his distress at approximately 3 p.m., but unfortunately they were too late. Anthony was a junior in the chemical engineering department, and the search for his body is currently underway. In the wake of this tragedy, and as the weather warms up, it is always a good idea to brush up on your kayak safety if you're planning an aquatic daytime getaway. I went out to Tuttle Creek State Park with Emily Starkey to demonstrate some do's and don'ts. Many people all over the country enjoy kayaking in their spare time. With thousands of miles of waterways, Kansas sees its fair share of outdoorsmen and women who take advantage of them. However, it is all too easy for these outings to turn dangerous. When kayaking, it is very important to remember basic safety skills and make sure you're prepared for an emergency. We compiled a list of 10 important tips from the Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism to remember next time you venture out onto the water. First, you always want to wear a life vest and be able to swim in a current, especially if you're planning on traveling to a river. A whistle is also a good idea so that you can alert bystanders if you get into trouble. You should also always have a partner with you in case of an emergency. It's important to never overload your craft. If you do have equipment, be sure to spread it out evenly to avoid capsizing. When you're in the kayak, be sure to maintain a low center of gravity and three points of contact with the vessel. Standing up or moving around can cause the small craft to capsize. Always stay alert and watch out for other boaters. Dress properly for the weather and the type of boating you are doing. Plug all drain holes and check your craft for leaks. Map out a general route and timetable for your trip beforehand, and if necessary, have your vehicle shuttled to the takeout point. Lastly, know the weather forecast before you head out. While you're on the water, stay close to shore and monitor the weather. If things get rough, head to land. If you remember these tips, your kayaking experience will be both safe and fun. See you on the water. If you want to learn more about water safety and other Kansas outdoor activities, you can visit ksoutdoors.com. Are you ready for Fake Patty's Day? The town will come alive once again this Saturday, all decked out in green. To get more perspective, I took to the street to ask the tough question. Is Fake Patty's a hero or a villain? What are your plans for Fake Patty's Day? My plan for Fake Patty's Day, I mean, I'm just going to have some friends come down from Lawrence, you know, show them a good time, show what I do here in Manhattan, and really just, I plan not to remember the day by the end of the night, so that's really what I'm up for. A Fake Patty's Day! Woo! <laughs> well, one of my friends is coming in town from Duke University, so that'll be pretty fun. He'll stay with me, and then I'm probably going to go to uh, a fraternity function. I don't really have plans. Really, I'm just going to follow the Manhattan RCPD. Uh, their Twitter page and see what's happening, see what the drunks are doing. Those are prospective students. They don't need to know about Fake Patty's Day yet. My roommates and I decided to get a keg this year, so we're throwing a little party at our house. I don't want to talk to me about Fake Patty's Day. I will be at work at 1863. Fake Patty's Day. What are your plans for the holiday? I am starting the day off by hosting a breakfast with some wonderful friends. We're gonna ha probably have breakfast burritos and have some adult beverages because we are of age. And I will continue to have adult beverages throughout the day. Hi, how do you feel about Fake Patty's Day? Is Fake Patty's a hero or a villain? 
<laughs> I just think people think should pick up their trash. For me personally, littering is like one of my pet peeves. So you know, it's not that hard. Just hold on to it, throw it away. There's a bunch of trash cans in the field. Uh, I'd say as long as people uh, kind of keep it to Aggieville and aren't walking the streets with open containers, I'd say it's a good time. Brings the community together. I think that's important. I would definitely say a hero. Um, Relieve a little stress for a day, and I mean, a lot of people come in and spend a lot of money in the community, so another great win for Manhattan. On Saturday, it'll be the hero. On Sunday, when I'm trying to study and I don't want to get out of bed, it will be the villain. <laughs> I have not heard anything better than that, folks. You heard it first. <laughs> that was one of the most fun packages I've done, but man, getting people to talk to me was like pulling teeth. Except for that dog. He was very talkative. Tomorrow, March 10th, Aggieville will be hosting one of the largest college parties, Fake Patty's Day. While the holiday is good for increased business, the Aggieville Business Association takes the safety of its patrons visiting the Ville into consideration. Morrow Street will be closing start, starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday until 3.30 a.m. on Sunday and will only be open to foot traffic walking through Aggieville. Those 18 and older are allowed on Morrow because bars are allowing entry for patrons 18 and older. This is to get people away from house parties and under the supervision of emergency services should an emergency occur. Actually, there's a couple of the bars that are opening to 18 and up. And what we're trying to really create is we want people to come out of the house parties and back down to Aggieville. And we got to give them a reason to do that. The problem is with Fake Patty's Day and the, the house parties is it's grown so big in Manhattan that it's no longer contained. And when things happen, the police are stretched out so far that the response time could be slower. And so what we're trying to do, what we want to do, is not just creating business for Aggieville, which is always great, but at the same time, we want everybody to be safe. With Fake Patty's Day being one of the biggest parties in Manhattan, things can get a little crazy. Here are some tips to, for you to follow throughout the festivities on Saturday. Eli Strom joins us in the studio. Eli? Thanks, Callie. If you are going to multiple locations, it is smart to get yourself a designated driver. This can ensure the safety of not only you, but everyone else on the road. If you, do, if you cannot get a designated driver, Lyft and Uber will be available throughout the day. Second, make sure that you eat food before you drink, as it can slow your body's absorption of alcohol, which can reduce the risk of getting drunk. But don't think that eating beforehand will prevent you from becoming intoxicated. And finally, it is important to space out your drinks. Consuming water throughout the day can also help you in the future. Drinking water can help lessen the effects of a hangover the next day. Plus, it is a good idea to keep track of how much alcohol you have consumed. This can prevent yourself from drinking too much, resulting in alcohol poisoning. However, if you do find yourself in this predicament, call 911. Riley County EMS will have professionals throughout the community surrounding the Aggieville District all day on Saturday. Follow these tips and remember to have a fun but safe Fake Patty's Day. Back to you, Callie and Evan. Thanks, Eli. Coming up after the break, we will take a look at how a local business became a part of the Fake Patty's Day tradition. And what caused K-State's Student Governing Association to postpone this presidential election? So stay tuned. I was so pleased with what I saw on the discussion boards last night. Who started the module? K-State Global Campus offers flexible online learning, the same name brand education, quality programs, and recognized award-winning professors with the flexibility to fit your life. Here you are, sir. Can I get you anything else? For your comfort and safety, vital baggage must be stored in the overhead. K-State Global Campus. Always on. Always there. The best kept secret in Manhattan is not a secret anymore. I'm Wyatt Thompson, the voice of the Wildcats, and welcome to JP Sports Grill. With daily chef inspired specials, a full bar, and a diverse menu that has something for everyone, this place is guaranteed to impress. JP Sports Grill, your new favorite spot. I'm Kathleen from Mining, Germany. I'm Ginger from Overland Park, Kansas. I've traveled to London and saw the Parliament, studied in Mexico City, spent the summer in Austria, went skiing in the Alps. Oh, and I visited the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Well, I've been to the world's largest ball of twine. Can we go? Of course! Become an international buddy today and develop new friendships and experience different cultures. Up next, the world's deepest hand-dug well. Is it near the Grand Canyon?
Fake patties is a great time for those looking for a party, but the party goers aren't the only ones benefiting from this fake holiday. MHK All Day reporter Blake Reed has more on the story. Fake Patties Day brings in people from all around the world. With those people come plenty of business for local Manhattan businesses. From bars to clothing shops and even hotels, this fake holiday brings in a rush of traffic that you wouldn't see on a normal week in Manhattan. Uh, in the hotel, I mean, for the most part, we book up, you know, we get pretty full. And, I mean, it's just another part of that college life culture that's around here. And we're going to take advantage of it while we can, you know. And I don't know how long Fake Patties is going to be around, but it definitely makes money for everybody, so. Right now, the streets of Aggieville are relatively calm, but that won't be the case this coming Saturday. I caught up with one local business that tells me how they prepare for the rush of Fake Patties Day. So we've actually been preparing the, for this since like January, I think it is, but um, we've just been having a bunch of like inventory on shirts coming in. We've been rolling like crazy. Um, we've been having like, we've been pre-sending like a bunch of designs just because we know people are going to be wanting them and stuff like that, but we're just pretty much trying to like jumpstart the store. Just like pretty much have it all set up like green and stuff like that. Thread will be open all day Saturday selling shirts, hats, and other festive accessories. And they will also have booths set up all around Aggieville. Other Aggieville businesses have been preparing for Fake Baddies Day by selling wristbands that will allow anybody who buys them entry along with deals on drinks and food throughout the day. From Manhattan, Kansas, I'm Blake Reed, MHK All Day. We actually have a shirt here with us. And you know, you can get creative with these. Callie, what's the uh, what's the best fake Patty's Day shirt that you've ever seen? I actually saw a shirt that had all the Wizard of Oz characters with the scarecrow doing a keg stand, which makes sense because he doesn't have any brains. <laughs> That's right. Shouldn't do those. <laughs> well, residents around Douglas Park, located at the corner of 9th and Yuma in Manhattan, will have a new place to play since the city approved a $3.4 million facility that will add new public recreation amenities that are currently lacking in Manhattan. The community center and Douglas Park currently consist of the main facility. The center annex a playground and a basketball court. The pro proposed plan will place the new building on the open field at the corner of 10th and Fort Riley Boulevard. Tour pole that was located in the southeast corner of this block and, uh, and it closed probably 20, 25 years ago. And that is where we're going to build a new gym that will be a new facility added to these two facilities that we have now, which will make this a recreation complex. SGA elections at K-State are taking place this week. MHK All Day reporter Josh Yankoviz has the coverage. The string of SGA announcements starting Monday when an unexpected turn of events left presidential candidate Paloma Roman and her vice president Michael Leverett out of the race. We were like, oh my gosh, like what's going to happen? But we learned that you can appeal for it. And there's different sections on how to appeal and what you're appealing as. So we decided to appeal as the punishment is too harsh. And so we wrote, you know, what we had to say because at this hearing, it's by the student tribunal board and you can't be there and you can't, I guess, represent yourself. So we wanted to at least explain like what, why we felt this way about like the punishment being too harsh. Official action was taken following a complaint filed by a member of the SGA that led to Roman Leverett disqualification. Roman's appeal was reviewed by K-State Student Tribunal who found a lack of evidence regarding the case, resulting in the reinstatement of their campaign. On the tribunal's recommendation, SGA's Elections Commissioner Corbin Solachik postponed the presidential elections in order to give the student body time to acknowledge the reinstatement. But ultimately, um, we decided that, again, for the students, that they deserve the right to know that um, the campaign was reinstated. Um, and there's a lot of attention that was surrounding the issue. Um, and students were, we believe that students uh, needed the opportunity to explore. Students who didn't know what was going on um, were able to explore what happened and the platforms of the candidates and actually have time to decide who they wanted to vote for. Jordan Keel and her vice president Lacey Pitts view the extension as just another challenge. The analogy I like to use is that it was like coming up for water when you're holding your breath um, but then there's an extra foot so we were ready to come up for that breath of fresh air finish out elections strong um, and now we have another foot to get through. Speaking of great things to do during the week Braxton Jones is here in the studio to tell us what events are going on next week on the MHK community calendar. Braxton. Thanks, Evan. If you're looking for a free cup of coffee or something fun to do next week in Manhattan, we've got you covered with this week's community calendar. On Monday, the K-State Police Department will be hosting a community safety talk aimed at making students feel safer on campus. The event, sponsored by K-State Libraries, is free of charge and will be in Hale Library from 12 to 1.30.
If the arts are more your speed, Irish traditions come to life through music and dance in Riverdance. The 20th anniversary world tour of the Irish phenomenon will make a stop in Manhattan as a part of the McCain Performance Series on Tuesday at 7.30. And tickets for that show are still available at the McCain box office. Have you ever wondered if you have what it takes to be on a show like Shark Tank? Well, K-State Launch gives students from all majors the chance to put their inner entrepreneur to the test. On Wednesday, March 14th, the all-day competition will kick off in the College of Business. Later on in the week, you can wind down with yoga and wine on Thursday night at the Liquid Art Winery in the state. The cost for this event is only $5. Doors open to the tasting room at 4, followed by yoga at 6 p.m. And finally, on Friday, the Manhattan Public Library will be hosting a movie night just for teens grades 7 to 12. I'm sorry, parents, you'll have to miss this one. Showtime is at 5 p.m. And that's all we have for the community calendar this week. Back to you, Evan and Callie. Thanks, Braxton. Don't go anywhere because coming up next in sports, we take a look at how the Wildcats fared in their first matchup of the Big 12 tournament. And how for one K-State student, baseball is more than just a game. Schultz one, high and deep to left, goodbye. Shot to right, K-State's going to try and score two. Another play at the play, but this time Brevin slides past the tag. And Brad Hill is the all-time winningest coach in K-State history. Welcome back to MHK All Day. The Wildcats kicked off Big 12 tournament play yesterday. MHK All Day reporter Nate Funk has the results. Nate? Thanks, Callie. The Kansas State men's basketball team is continuing its success in the month of March as the Cats won their Big 12 op opener over the TCU Horned Frogs 66-64 in overtime. Along with that, Dean Wade and Barry Brown were recently selected for the Big 12 honors as first team for Wade and second team for Brown, with Brown also selected to the defensive first team. Here's what they had to say about their selections. Good job. Very excited about it. Um, but, uh, you know, I just got to keep, keep playing how we're playing. Um, just uh, can't, be, can't settle now. Uh, we got to keep turning up. Oh, that's great for me, man. I, 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 I try and uh, put a lot of work in to uh, get where I'm at and try to um, get better than where I'm at um, for the future. So for the people to kind of see a little bit of the hard work that I put in, and uh, give me those accolades, it's, um, it's, it's a great honor. Wildcat Creek has been owned and operated by Kevin Fately and his wife Beth since 1993. Along with an indoor fitness center, Wildcat Creek is home to multiple outdoor activities, which include a nine-hole golf course, foot golf, mini golf, batting cages, and a driving range. With Kansas having fairly unpredictable weather, Fately explained what people that go to the Wildcat Creek for outdoor activities are doing around this time of the year. As soon as we get a day over 45 degrees, we have people come out and start golfing. Some of them are actually wearing shorts. They're so excited about it. Uh, they just layer up. Um, mini golf really doesn't pick up until it gets warmer, but the golf course picks up immediately. They're a little more adapted to the weather. 
Uh, the batting cage, we historically don't open up until spring break anyhow because it has to be consistently warm. But the people uh, will uh, leave the fitness center and start doing a little more activity outside, which we enjoy seeing. The Wildcats baseball team was back in action on Wednesday as they took on the Incarnate Word champions here in Manhattan. Caleb Littlejohn picked up a win for the Cats in the uh, striking out three batters in four innings pitch while allowing three earned runs against the Cardinals. However, the biggest play of the day for the Cats was Jake Miller hitting a grand slam in the sixth inning, giving the Cats a 12-3 lead. The Cats would end the game in the seventh, with the Cats being victorious 14-3. While baseball is typically seen as America's pastime, for one K-State student, there's more to it than just catching, throwing, and hitting the ball. Around MHK All Day reporter, Brady Budke has more. Tom Mike Keels considers former San Francisco Giant and current Texas Ranger pitcher Tim Lincecum to be his hero and someone he has looked up to all his life. I basically saw this guy that was pitching differently than every, everybody else, and uh, he was just really killing it. Eventually, after years of already collecting baseball cards, Mike Heels found himself buying Lincecum's baseball cards. Um, I didn't really get a lot of amazing cards right off the bat because he was on top of the world at that point, so it was harder for a kid my age to do that. Card collecting has always been a hobby throughout the sport. Scott Neal, owner of the baseball card store in Overland Park, Kansas, says people collecting their favorite players fuels the industry of card collecting. I um, just want to collect cards of their heroes, especially like the World Series, Kansas City Royals. People wanted cards of the Royals here locally. Uh, interest picked up a lot just because of the Royals' success. After being in the card collecting business for more than 10 years, Mike Keels decided it was time for him to pursue his dream card a Tim Lincecum Superfractor rookie autograph card, a one of one in the best Tim Lincecum card in existence. After my friend had made the purchase to acquire the card, um, after some long time, uh, it kind of it kind of rubbed me the wrong way that I wasn't the man to buy the card. Um, but uh, after a while, you know, just staying close with him and staying close with my priorities, I was able to sell a lot of my collection to try and get the cards. And Mike Heels was able to purchase his dream card and says it's proof that dreams do come true with a little hard work. From Manhattan, Kansas, I'm Brady Budke, MHK All Day. That's all we have for sports today. Back to you, Callie and Evan. Thanks, Nate. After the break, we see how virtual reality is being used to help improve navigational skills. And we'll take a look at the Sunset Zoo's new furry friends. Bases loaded, one out, bottom of the ninth. Cats and Sooners tied at five, and the Cats trying to win a Big 12 title for the first time ever. Outside, it gets away to the plate. Kansas State has its title. Ships it in the middle, and into the goal. What a score for K-State. Research. It's applying the bigger picture toward the greater good. Defending the world from adversaries, both seen and unseen. Interpreting realities to unlock solutions. It's our land-grant mission to serve our world utilizing sharp minds from first-year students to world-renowned experts. What makes research so strong at Kansas State University? Vision. Progress. You. We are groundbreaking educators, laser focused on inspiring students and sparking solutions. We are dedicated professionals, keeping campus safe, accessible, and inviting. We have big responsibilities, entrusted with serving our community and world. We are Kansas State University faculty and staff, and we have many titles, but one vision, always put family first. What turns profession into passion, selflessness, integrity, 
you. Callie, if I said spatio-visual tests correlate with a more realistic assessment of one's ability to recall root and landmarks, would you have just the slightest idea what I mean? Um, absolutely not, Evan. Okay, well, I don't know either, so. <laughs> <laughs> but our very own Grant Nicholson tried to get to the bottom of what those words mean at the Alive Laboratory in Seton Hall. The Alive Lab in Seton Hall, which stands for Advanced Landscape and Immersive Visualization Environment, is currently running a survey for students that is looking at individuals' knowledge of landmarks and route analyzation using different technological influence. The end goal is really to help understand how different, a couple of things. So one, how different wayfinding devices may affect our spatial memory. So for instance, when we plug in a, spa a place to go from A to B, we're told what route to take. And it's not unless we purposely make a decision to go off that route that it tells us how to get back on there. But I'm interested in saying, well, what if we gave people choices at different intersections? The study uses a gaming engine to create virtual worlds that participants can navigate using VR headsets, normal computer monitors, and their large panoramic screen. This is all in an effort to determine what different wayfinding aids and cues can be used to aid personal navigation through technology. And here in the massive panoramic screen, participants get a look at a virtual park and a city center to try to remember what they have seen and what landmarks they might have encountered. We're, we're running people through the same battery of tests with these different technologies to determine whether or not any one of those technologies may or may not be more influential. With popular GPS apps coming standard on every smartphone and tablet, the survey is studying how people interact with their... You can head to ksualive.edu for more information and to sign up to take the survey in Alive Labs in Seton. That definitely looks like something I'd like to try. The Sunset Zoo has gained many cute new faces this year. The zoo now has a newborn white-handed gibbon, a nine-month-old red panda, a newborn wallaby joey, and three wolf pups. Even though these animals were all born at the zoo, they might not be able to stay there and grow up with their families. Well... That is all the time we have for today. Well, those, those puppies, I mean, okay, let's talk about that first. Yeah. We're almost done, but, I mean, they're, they're the most adorable thing I've ever seen, and I wish we could adopt them, but I don't think that really works like that. And, I, and I'm wondering, is there more to the puppies than just, you know, them being puppies? I think that maybe, maybe if you could adopt them, that'd be... That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. I mean, they said they might have to split up the families, but like, I mean, if they just wanted to come to my place, we could have fun. I don't know. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in at MHK all day. Have a great weekend. This is Channel 8 News.